Good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about the Office of Inspector General before we begin the program. Um, for those of you who may, who may not be familiar with OIG, we're an independent organization that oversees the approximately 300 programs run by the Department of Health and Human Services, also known as HHS. HHS is among the largest departments in the federal government, encompassing Medicare and Medicaid, but also other programs such as public health, medical research, food and drug safety, welfare, child and family services, disease prevention, Indian health, and mental health services. And it also exercises leadership responsibilities in the public health emergency preparedness arena. Now, as you're likely aware, Medicare and Medicaid are the largest of all these programs. With respect to Medicare and Medicaid, our mission in OIG is to promote economy and efficiency in the delivery of healthcare by preventing, detecting, and remedying instances of fraud, waste, and abuse. Now, as you can tell from our program and our focus of doing these trainings around the country, compliance is a key component of OIG's work. We have a long history of working with the provider community, and we take pride in that. We feel it's extremely important. And we've developed a variety of tools and resources to help providers. And you'll be hearing about those tools during the training. I'd now like to introduce you to Inspector General Dan Levinson, who will be providing our keynote address. Um, Mr. Levinson has been the Inspector General here at HHS since 2004. And in his role, he is responsible for oversight of the over 300 diverse programs here at HHS. As leader of the office in the Medicare arena, he focuses greatly on OIG's compliance efforts as a way to educate providers and prevent healthcare fraud, waste, and abuse before it occurs. He has testified multiple times before Congress about OIG's compliance work and has given many speeches to provider groups about compliance. In fact, just this April, he spoke to the healthcare Compliance Association about the key elements of compliance. And that presentation, which was just posted yesterday, uh, along with his testimony, can be viewed on our website. Mr. Levinson has devoted much of his career to government oversight. He graduated from the University of Southern California and George Washington and Georgetown Universities, and he's a member of the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. So um, with that, I'd like to welcome Inspector General Levinson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sherry, for that wonderful introduction, and good morning, everyone. Uh, before I begin, I do want to express my deepest thanks to you, Sherry, for your outstanding counsel all along in helping to create these training programs. And I do want to give a special thanks to our co-chairs this morning, Amanda Walker and Meredith Williams, who you've already heard from and you'll be hearing from again in just a few minutes. There are so many people to thank in our office, actually, for the outstanding work that they have done in preparing and then executing these provider <laughs> compliance training programs across the country this year. And I do want to thank uh, everyone in the office nationwide who has been uh, so deeply involved in putting together uh, such a valuable collection of presentations. Uh, certainly here, as you're about to experience this morning, but across the country, uh, these have been very valuable sessions and they've been exceedingly popular. And I just want to note all of the cities that we have already done these presentations in. They include beginning uh, earlier this winter, Houston, Tampa, Kansas City, Baton Rouge, uh, Denver, and now here in Washington, this is our sixth and final uh, presentation of this, uh, of this series. And I must tell you, uh, it has been uh, very, very well received. We've had, in, a, in effect, a standing room only audience uh, for every one of the presentations. And I think there are three reasons why hundreds of people have wanted to attend these presentations. Uh, 
Uh, I think the first has to do uh, with the growing sense that compliance programs are not just for the large healthcare providers who historically have had uh, programs in place, uh, going back probably to the 1990s, if not before. That given the importance of getting reimbursement and billing issues right, that this is not something that can be uh, done in either a random or non-programmatic way. It's exceedingly important to have structure when it comes to compliance these days. And there is that sense that it is important to become familiar with how compliance is done in the healthcare field. So in that sense, uh, not surprising that people would be interested in learning more about it. Uh, I think the second reason is the thirst for information. Uh, compliance programs do have structure and they cover a very, very wide range of subjects. And everybody should have a compliance plan. I was given a compliance plan this morning, actually, by my office. And I was told that over the course of the few minutes I have with you beginning this morning, uh, that I should not forget to include mention of HIPAA privacy and security, HIPAA standing for the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. That's a, uh, that's a mouth load. Uh, we call it HIPAA. And of course, very, very instrumental law in in effect, creating the healthcare compliance field. Uh, risk assessments, you'll hear about communication with boards of directors, about routine and independent auditing and monitoring, and learning about the fraud and abuse laws, conducting investigations, avoiding conflicts of interest, and dealing soundly with the government in healthcare. All very, very important subjects. But I just read to you a list and a list is not really a compliance plan. Uh, the third reason, I think, why people have been so interested in these presentations this year is that there is also a growing awareness of the need for structure, of design, of getting a compliance architecture right. And I think one of the great, perhaps the great aspect of these training programs has been the thought that has gone into providing a, a very sound architecture for thinking through compliance and its relationship to enforcement. I mentioned the fraud and abuse laws. Here is an opportunity in the next hour or two to become generally familiar with the False Claims Act, with the anti-kickback statute, with the civil monetary penalties law with the exclusion statute, with the so-called Stark Law, the physician self-referral law, and of course with the criminal health care fraud statute. Important laws that anyone who's involved in health care uh, should be familiar with, and we integrate that into our uh, compliance presentations this morning. And I want to give special thanks in that regard to our creative director, in a sense, of Vicki Robinson, senior counsel in our office, who's helped structure this program uh, so thoughtfully. In addition to thanking all of our folks within our own office of Inspector General, I also want to thank the many government partners who have been very instrumental around the country and uh, here in Washington this morning as part of our presentations. Uh, here in D.C. today, we'll be hearing from Peter Budetti, who heads program integrity for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Delighted to have him as a presenter. As well as Nancy O'Connor, the very articulate regional administrator for CMS, down from Philadelphia today. Uh, John Pease, the Assistant United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, also down from Pennsylvania. And here in town, Jacqueline Franklin, the Supervisory Criminal Investigator for our Medicaid Fraud Control Unit here in D.C. Thank you all for being such an important part of today's program. Thank you for attending. Thank you for listening. We're really delighted that this will be a webcast so it will reach a much wider audience than we've had a chance to reach in our previous compliance program training opportunities. And with that, let's start with the program. Thank you.